What's up, fellas? It's the next day. I am doing some more testing on the phone with the oil. I can tell you right now, on, based on my experience with these devices, this thing would have been foaming over by now. The oil is working. I'm doing a little uh, fire brick endurance test while we're waiting. I'm just gonna let this thing sit here for a half hour. I was just curious to see if uh, fire brick would crack or blow up under extreme heat shock in localized, uh, localized areas. And just real tiny pinpoint areas from that flame might uh, make it react differently than uh, the whole brick getting heated up, I thought. But so far, so good, it hasn't cracked. At any rate, the only thing we have to worry about now is what they call soapification. I have read that not all oils will soapify. So let's hope that aviation oil is one of those oils. And due to the literature online regarding avi aviation oil, it supposedly has one of the, the highest water resistant characteristics available. Um, from, I'm not saying that you couldn't get marine oils that were better, but uh, aviation oils pretty much tout their ability to, to keep water out of bearings in them because there's such a huge safety risk, it would make sense that they would use the strongestly hydroscopic oil possible to, uh, to do that. Maybe hydroscopic isn't what I was trying to say. Was it diuretic? So now I'm saying words that I don't remember the definition to. Let me check that out. Check that out. Oh man, the camera can't see it. Almost see it. That's crazy. The heck's going on there? No, you can't see. That is weird. I don't know why it did that. It's like a 600 watt flame. About uh, 9.5 amps coming out of the wall. Well, we're up to 10.2 amps now. It's heated up some. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to sit there, let that sit there and run. Thought for the heck of it, I'd point it on this brick to see how the fire brick holds up to uh, excruciating abuse. It didn't crack, which is pretty cool. So it is very fire brickish. <laughs> what that's supposed to mean. Can see some other places here i have vitrified this fire brick with this flame didn't quite do the same thing there it's literally drilling a hole through the fire brick though so anyway that thing was probably sitting on there for about uh, 20 minutes so how tough is fire brick it's pretty freaking tough as far as uh durability to exposure of heat See if we can get that happen there. I don't want to put that torch too close because uh, it can get really hot and uh, cause a flashback. Move it on me. I'm gonna leave that on there for like a half hour because I gotta let this torch run for hours and hours anyway because I'm testing my anti-foaming agent that I'm using, which is basically just uh, high-grade aviation oil. It does still foam, but it won't allow it to build a column of foam that eventually ends up shooting into my bubbler and out into my torch over the course of a half hour. So during that process, I thought we would uh, Gather yeah, a little information on the durability of fire brick. We've all seen where an arc welder can vitrify these into glass. I just wanted to see if the thing would break from some kind of localized heat shock. And it appears to be totally impervious to that. I don't think we're going to be able to break this thing with any type of heat shock. Like sometimes rock will explode. This stuff, for example, that's a rock, piece of lime that cracked and blew up. It couldn't handle it. That fire brick's holding together real good though. 
We'll check it out in about a half hour. Just for the sake of knowing where we're at, we're right around 10 amps. That's 640 watts. The volt amps is uh, 1,800. That's the volts times amps. But because this is an AC system and it has a power factor of 0.53, the actual wattage is only 631 watts. You cannot use standard formulas to determine the wattage in AC systems. Um, even in DC systems that are powered by AC systems, you can't do it. You can't just hook an amp meter up to that and then multiply the amps by volts and get the watts because of the, the fluctuation, the sine wave, the actual wattage is the area under the sine wave in relation to the center line. So the up and bottom section, the area under those curves or those peaks, that's the actual energy. Here, I guess I can show you what I'm talking about here. Why? For some of you who don't know, so you've got, uh, we got a line here that represents zero voltage. And then we know that um, AC does this, okay? Actually, it does something like this. There's a bunch of waves, like right next to each other, but I don't want to confuse you because they're so fast. So we got this going on. In an AC system, the actual wattage is the area under this hatching. So if you were to cube off a second, let's say this was one second. Actually, there would be 60 of these waves in a single second. But, uh, so we're, we'll do a 60th of a second. The actual wattage is not the volts times amps, which would be the, the entire cube of this area. It's just the area in this hatch. Now, if you have a DC circuit where it's constant voltage, let's say the voltage goes up and then hits here, the wattage is the area under the hatch. And you can go um, volts times amps in that scenario because you got uh, volts times amps and then you have watt hours and all that crap. But for the most part, because it's a square, the area works by using this formula. But when you have these sine waves, the area is in this curve. You have to use calculus to determine the area in a curve, which is a process of doing all this stuff. And then in here, they'll take the formula, they'll do this. I'll do this like hundreds of times, but this here is one half of a square. So they'll take length times height, give some area, and then they'll divide it by two, which chops off the top of the square. And that gives them the area for the little zones right up against the, uh, the curve there. A close enough approximation. But that is how you determine watts in AC, and it has to do with those sine waves. And um, this little bad boy conveniently does that for you. I don't know how, so I'm not gonna bother explaining it to you, and I'm certainly not gonna waste your time because that's not gonna help any of us, and it'd probably take me an hour to figure it out. You see the size of those bubbles, and if you look at the nature of those bubbles, how fast they're popping, look at them, the larger ones popping right away. Anyone who's very familiar with these systems can look at these bubbles and, and, and read them right away that they're fairly decent. They're not too much to worry about. They're popping. That's what we want to see. The foamy bubbles that you know aren't going to pop have their own look to them. They don't move around that fast. See how fast those things are moving around? Something has happened to the surface tension of this water because of that oil. That oil has been dispersed into uh, microscopic droplets and the uh, literature I have read has mentioned that the size of the contaminant particles is very important in relation to the mitigation of foaming. It does something to the bubbles. Um, it gets inside of them. If it can get inside of it, it uh, ruins it. So it pops in micro bubbles or whatever. I don't know what the exact mechanism is for sure on every front, but that was one of the things they talked about. That's what the silica or the silicone crystalline silicone contamination is all about. It's in some of the spa treatments. That's how it's working. I'm going to need to fix this bubble. You can't really see how much gas I'm actually putting out because that front side doesn't emit gas. It's on the sides. 
I don't like that. I kind of need to use that to judge my tip sometimes. I can sometimes tell by the gas output if I'm close to danger with the tip I'm using because I've been using this thing so long. So, wow. That thing's growing some kind of funny cone. It's starting the table on fire. That is weird. So, guys, I'm calling this oil a success. It hasn't been the three weeks yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and post the next day video of this thing working just fine. Running at about 99 degrees. Got the blower fan going on it. I don't know why I got this uh, old Sonic transducer hooked up. It ain't doing nothing. It only does something when you can keep the flow down. I need a baffle in there to stop that flow from going straight down to the ultrasonic transducer. But I'm not even gonna worry about that now because the oil is working so good it doesn't even matter. It's a little over 10 amps right there. So I'm gonna turn that down just a bit. I also like this new router speed controller. The old one, the, something was wrong with it. It just didn't work the way this one does. I can adjust like right to the exact wattage I want almost of this thing. Fluctuates a little bit, but you can usually get it dialed in pretty close. I'm trying for 600 watts here. I'm slowly dialing it in. But you get the point. Not all router speed controllers can will do this. You'll buy four or five of these damn things, and only one of them will give you that um, analog spectrum all the way through. Uh, these, some of them you'll get, it's like a digitized thing and like you'll turn it at a 16th of a degree and you go up 10 amps, it's insane. They don't all act the same, they're not all the same. And I've tried adjusting that little mechanism down in there that, uh, is that a rheostat or a potentiometer maybe? You can see the, they're, not even set the same. They're real close, it looks like. Maybe they are. Hard to say. All I know is that dial isn't always the same, and sometimes messing with it doesn't solve the problem. Sometimes it does. I usually take them apart. Man, it looks like I'm gonna have to shut this down. I'm about ready to blow my tip up letting it do that. That is weird. Yeah, that whole torch is hot. Crazy. Couldn't quite let it sit there for a half hour if I wanted to. It sounds like glass crackling from a cooling off. It's crazy. So, if you're wondering how to stop foam in your torch, I'm, I'm saying this oil is the way to go. Like I said, in about a month, I'm gonna try the mineral oil, but uh, for now, I'm gonna post this as a viable solution because I've run these long enough to know by now I would have lost the torch. It had been foaming over. I wouldn't be able to run it continuously like this. So, in a couple of weeks, if it fails, I'll take the video down. I'm not gonna leave it up there like these other jerks who are leading us astray, man. That defoamer shit don't work and it ruins your torch and yet these guys got their videos up, 30,000 views on it. Like they just don't even care that they're misleading people and it pisses me off.